Hi, I'm Pat. Welcome back. I'm glad you're here. Today we're going to do a bit of an experiment. I've been thinking a lot lately about how to take full-scale traditional quilt designs and transfer them down to a mini scale, uh, um, something like an 8x10, but also keeping all of the detail uh, that would be present in the large quilt, uh, keeping that in the mini quilt as well. As you can imagine, some uh, details and features of the traditional lar you know, regular size quilt um, could be pretty challenging at a small scale. Uh, so anyhow, to get started with this idea, uh, what I'm doing today is making a Bargello uh, quilt in a very small scale. Oftentimes, Bargello quilts are made with two and a half inch wide jelly roll strips that are cut to varying widths. Uh, so today we're going to make uh, a Bargello technique with a much smaller scale than that. Um, so we'll talk about sizing and things as we get into it. Uh, but uh, m the point of this today is not necessarily to finish a mini quilt. It's more to do a technique experiment um, to, to see how Bargello can transition down to a very small scale. Um, you know, can we do it? Should we do it? Um, and is this a technique that we'd want to do uh, more of, say, in a slightly larger finished mini quilt that had sort of more complexity to it? Um, and do we like the finished look of a Bargello technique at a small scale? And how does it compare to um, how a Bargello looks at a large scale? So thanks for joining me today. I'm excited to get into this and hopefully we'll learn something together. The first thing I need to do is choose some prints that I like together. I've got a couple of candidates here. I'm focusing on batiks. I think I need at least about five prints for this to work. Here are the five I chose in the sequence that I'm going to use them. Each one has a little bit of color from its neighboring print so that way they transition smoothly. These have been sitting in my scrap box so they need a little pressing before I can use them. The needle plate on this 1941 featherweight doesn't have any markings on it for seam allowance measurements. so. I normally don't need it, but in this case, I'm going to mark a quarter inch just so I can be really careful with the seams on such a small quilt. I decided to have the strips in each set have a quarter inch finished width. So I'm taking these strips and I'm cutting them down to three quarters inch width. That gives me two seam allowances of one quarter each, plus the one quarter finished width in the middle. Some of the strips are longer than others, so for the shorter ones, I'm joining them together with a mitered seam just to get some extra length. Conveniently, the strips I started with were an inch and a half, so when I cut the three quarter inch strips, the piece I was left with was also three quarters of an inch. Now I'm starting to join all the prints together to make the strip set. So really all I'm doing here is taking all five strips and sewing them together lengthwise. I'm starting by connecting piece one and two and connecting piece three and four. Then I'll come back and connect the others. I know I'm going to wind up with a lot of bulk with the seam allowance on such small finished width, so I've decided to press all the seams open just to help a little bit. Now I'm joining piece 5 to piece 3 and 4. You can see with finished widths this small, I'm starting to get seam allowances overlapping with neighboring seam allowances. The last seam to sew is connecting piece two and piece three. That'll get all five prints together. I'm being really careful with alignment here because I want to make sure these quarter inch finished widths are as consistent as possible.
Okay, here's the finished strip set with pieces two, three, and four at their finished quarter inch width. Looking at the end, you can see the seam allowance is overlapping. That's inevitable at this scale, but I'm just doing the best I can to manage any bulk. Next, I'm gonna start cutting this up into different widths, and we've got 28 inches overall to work with. To start creating the Bargello effect, I'm gonna cut pieces that are the same width and then connect them to make one strip set. I've decided to cut three pieces of each width based on how much I have to work with and needing to cut a few different widths. That gives me three repeats or 15 rows in each set, and I think that's enough for us to get the Bargello effect we're looking for. I'm not going to do an in-depth tutorial in this video on how to create the Bargello effect, but essentially what you're looking for are the same repeating prints in the same order, but with strip sets that are cut at varying widths. That gives the curve effect that you see in a typical Bargello quilt. In this case, I've decided to use widths that vary by an eighth of an inch, uh, ranging from three quarters of an inch up to an inch and a quarter. Here are the five sets that I've made, and the widths decrease by one eighth of an inch, going from left to right. In a Bargello, each row has its prints offset by one relative to its neighbor, so next we're going to start shifting some prints from the top to the bottom of each row to create that effect. I'm just going to rip some of the existing seams to move pieces from the top to the bottom. On the thickest piece, I'm going to move four strips from the top to the bottom. For the next thickest, I'm going to move three, and then two uh, pieces from the third one, one piece on the fourth strip, and then the thinnest one, we won't move any. And that way each one is offset by one print relative to its neighbor. After ripping seams, I just take the part that I disconnected from the top and then re-sew it onto the bottom. Next, I'm going to start joining these pieces together, and here I have to be really careful about aligning the seams, otherwise the effect is lost, so I'm pinning pretty carefully and sewing slowly just to make sure everything is aligned well. It's worth noting that each of these pieces has the front piece of fabric plus two seam allowances that are overlapping. So when I'm connecting these, I'm sewing through typically six layers of fabric at a time. I'm gonna continue pressing seams open to do my best to minimize the bulk, but at this point, I'm pressing three layers of fabric in each direction, which is getting a little challenging. All right, with these first five sets together, I've got a little more fabric to work with. I definitely can't go any thinner than quarter inch finished width, so I'm gonna add two more sets at the wider end. So these will be an inch and three eighths and an inch and a half wide. So I'll make these the same way I did the previous sets and then connect them. So I've used uh, nearly 28 inches of fabric to get my seven rows here, and I think this seven rows is enough for us to uh, consider the center portion finished. Uh, there's enough here to get the effect that I'm looking for and to be able to evaluate this technique at this scale. 
even though at the beginning I said this was just a technique experiment, I think I would like to see how this looks with some framing. So I'm taking this darker batik fabric uh, to make a border. I'm cutting a generously sized length of border that's longer than each side, and then I'm going to cut that into four strips. The four strips are going to be an inch wide, and that's going to give me a half inch finished width for the border after I account for a quarter inch seam allowance, plus a quarter inch on the other side that will fall under the binding. So I'm not doing anything fancy here. I'm just connecting the border pieces on two opposing sides. I'll press those seams and then trim the ends and then connect the border pieces on the remaining two sides. This is a good time to mention that despite the featherweight being a pretty small machine, it's had zero trouble sewing through so many layers of fabric at one time. I do have some other machines that I also enjoy using, and I'll definitely get some of those out for future videos. So here's the finished piece for today. I think the border definitely helps. Uh, stick around, I'm going to talk about some of the questions that I posed in the beginning of the video. Now that we've finished this technique experiment, I want to go back and answer the three questions that I asked myself at the beginning. So the first question was, can we replicate the look of a Bargello large quilt at a small scale? And I think the answer is clearly yes. You can see here, even with just five prints and a relatively small size finished piece, uh, you get that curving effect, um, you know, with the offset staggered prints. So I think that works. Um, the next question was, can we do it? So this is where we uncover any logistical challenges or problems that come up when you're trying to bring something down to a small scale. The biggest and frankly only problem I found with this was dealing with the seam allowances um, and the bulk of the seam allowances when we're dealing with the really thin strips. So our thinnest strip here is a quarter inch finished width. And if you look on the back, you can see we have seam allowances stacked on top of seam allowances. So of course this can create a lot of bulk. Um, so as long as you're okay dealing with that, um, then there's no reason we can't make this technique at a small scale like this. Uh, keep in mind that you don't want to go any smaller than a quarter inch finished width on any of your strips or else you'll have nowhere for those seam allowances to go. And the last question we asked was, should we do it? So I think there's great opportunities to make a slightly larger mini quilt, something like 8x10 or 10x10, uh, that includes maybe more prints, more curves, um, you know, more detail and features. Uh, that will really look nice, and I think you could probably effectively create um, a, a very small version of, a, um, of what would typically be on a large bed um, in a Bargello quilt. So um, I absolutely think we should. It's something that I would like to make at some point. I don't know how soon I'll get to it, um, but it's certainly on my list of things I'd like to make eventually. So thanks for joining me. I hope you learned something, and I certainly did, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.